There are many things happening in NASCAR this new season. While cup teams are hopeful about new revenue agreements, NASCAR is testing some big modifications to the next-gen car in Phoenix. Hello NASCAR fam and welcome back to NASCAR Live. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. And let's begin. Officials from NASCAR's competition division have scheduled a two-day test at Phoenix Raceway this week to assess potential changes to the next-gen's car rules package, such as potential aerodynamic adjustments, test runs using mufflers for specific races, and initiatives to reduce rubber buildup in wheel wells. On Tuesday and Wednesday at the Arizona Oval, six Cup Series teams are expected to take part in the testing sessions. In order to establish a baseline, officials plan to divide the test days into five sections, one practice run using the present rules setup, followed by four more sessions using various combinations. Officials stated that any advantages discovered on those courses should be applicable to all track types, even if the adjustments are intended to enhance racing on-road courses and oval tracks that are one mile in length or shorter. Teams, drivers and officials will try to determine if alterations to the car's underwing or floor would result in any aerodynamic gains in traffic flow or passing ability. The redesigned underbelly retains the present splitter while restructuring the area behind the engine panel and extending the diffuser strakes lower. It also uses several features that have been created in the test car for the Garage 56 Le Mans project. According to Dr. Eric Jacuzzi, Vice President of Vehicle Performance at NASCAR, computer modeling of those changes resulted in overall increased downforce, but those demonstrations also revealed a drastically different traffic pattern. It doesn't push as it comes closer because it doesn't lose as much front downforce when it's behind another vehicle, according to Jacuzzi. Three of the four new trial configurations will test the usage of a rear spoiler that is 2.5 inches in diameter rather than the current 4-inch height to counteract the added downforce. Anecdotal driver feedback and data analysis back up this perspective adjustment, and this week's real-world test in Phoenix should serve as yet another yardstick. If you observe the vehicle's race on the track, you can figure out how to relate it back to. You may have noticed that they frequently run with their noses up. This is because, according to Jacuzzi, the more air you can direct toward the diffuser, the more downforce it will produce at the rear. So we made these tweaks that added more air to it, allowing us to lower the spoiler height while maintaining roughly the same downforce as we did at the beginning of the year. We presume that teams have made some progress simply by figuring out the best locations to construct stuff. In other words, we're about where we were at the beginning of last year, but with a considerably smaller spoiler. The Bush Light Clash, which will take place on February 5 at the Los Angeles Coliseum, and the first Chicago Street Race, which will take place in the Windy City's downtown, are two distinctive events that are taking place on the test's second day. These events are both placed in urban areas. The only projection competition organizers have in mind for the sound reduction, according to Jacuzzi, is to not damage the engine to the point where it needs to be mechanically altered, so any adjustments they need to do will be electronic, tuning and stuff like that. According to Jacuzzi, mufflers should reduce the sound of the car by 6 to 10 decibels, which would be a modest but significant difference. He was quick to add, though, that the V8 rumbling, which has long been a defining feature of the fan experience, would be preserved by the authorities. Jacuzzi remarked, it's a little less harsh. It will only lessen some of that edge. It will still be loud, and you should still use ear protection and all those other things. It won't sound as aggressive, but it will sound similar. A buildup of tire rubber in the wheel wells and below the car that may have caused fire concerns during the inaugural season of the next-gen car last year will also be addressed by officials in collaboration with the teams. To put it another way, Jacuzzi explains, What we are doing is having these panels that basically seal the front splitter to the hood. The steering and braking systems of the car may also be updated, and this will be tested by a few teams at the test. On tracks with heavier cornering loads, a larger bore steering rack will be put to the test as a potential fix. To increase wear consistency, teams will also test out various brake rotors. According to Jacuzzi, we're experiencing some warping issues and other similar things, so basically where one side of the disc is getting cooler than the other side, it causes it to kind of bend over and push the pads away, so that when they press the brake, the brake doesn't respond because it's being moved away. So the goal is to address some of these thermal concerns and see if we can make it consistent. It's not a consistent problem, 
It kind of relies on the brake pad they're using and other factors, but we'll choose a few teams that have been loud about their problems and attempt to get them to assist us fix this. With two different types of sessions, a 90-minute open practice and a group run of 30 to 40 laps each to mimic race conditions, officials intend to evaluate each configuration. Each day of testing will end with a debriefing for the drivers, crew chiefs, and authorities. Jacuzzi says, I don't think we would just disregard it. I believe that one of the things we were worried about was ensuring that everyone had the chance to examine it. Therefore, we would probably proceed with some sort of organizational test, TBD on that, and then sort of decide what the rollout plan would be in order to be the most effective for the industry and make it fair for everyone. We've undoubtedly utilized the all-star race as a testing ground in the past, but it doesn't, in my opinion, match with what we're trying to accomplish. Making sure we have an organizational test and gaining support comes first. From there, we can work out a reasonable rollout strategy. According to NASCAR authorities, the following teams are scheduled to take part in the two-day test. Number 1 Trackhouse Racing Chevrolet Number 6 RFK Racing Ford Number 20 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota Number 22 Team Penske Ford Number 43 Legacy Motor Club Chevrolet Number 47 JTG Doherty Racing Chevrolet Furthermore, Jimmy Johnson and his Legacy Motor Club team will get some track experience during the two-day event as part of a select driver test. Johnson is a seven-time Cup Series champion. Johnson, who hasn't competed in NASCAR since the conclusion of his 2020 season, has a condensed Cup Series stroll scheduled for this year. Last year, Mike Rockenfeller and Kimi Raikkonen participated in comparable test sessions prior to making their Cup debuts, taking advantage of on-track time intended for professional drivers who have never driven a next-gen stock car. Besides hosting NASCAR's championship weekend for the past three years, the Phoenix venue also conducted a next-gen organizational test from January 25 to 26. And now, let's look at these four storylines for the diamond season of NASCAR. For those keeping track at home, NASCAR will mark its 75th anniversary in 2023, which means that since 1948, vehicles have been racing around courses. In the Bush Light Clash at the LA Coliseum, racing will resume starting the following weekend, February 5. This is the ideal moment to review the major stories for 2023 because, as usual, there have been some significant changes throughout the offseason. A champion returns. Jimmy Johnson, a seven-time NASCAR champion, is coming back, but not as a driver. Not as a full-time driver, at least. Johnson will participate in five races as a part-time driver and as a co-owner of Petty GMS Racing. Two NASCAR Hall of Famers and one potential Hall of Famer are together in one organization, thanks to the trio of owners at Petty GMS Racing that consists of Richard Petty, Dale Inman, and Johnson right now. Over their respective careers, the three have amassed a combined 476 victories. The new team will be known as Legacy Motor Club in honor of the owner's background and to pay homage to previous auto clubs. In addition, Johnson will be able to compete in five events in 2023 thanks to the new team arrangement including an effort to qualify for and compete in the Daytona 500. Johnson will drive the number 84 car, despite not having access to his former number 48 car, and will run the number that comes closest to it. The sponsor for all five of the races will be Carvana on Johnson's Chevrolet. After supporting Johnson for the past two years in the IndyCar series, Carvana decided to support him in NASCAR. Todd Gordon, who won the 2018 Cup Series, will serve as Johnson's crew chief. Gordon stopped competing full-time at the end of 2021, but he leaped at the opportunity to ride the war train five more times in 2023 and work with Johnson. This has caused some worry about Johnson's eligibility for the Hall of Fame this upcoming year in the NASCAR community. Having a conversation with Winston Kelly, the president and curator of the NASCAR Hall of Fame. According to Winston Kelly, it will rely on what the nominating committee determines as well as what Johnson's objectives are. Like Dale Earnhardt Jr., who was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2022, is he merely returning to compete in races occasionally, or does he plan to make more frequent appearances? The committee will decide in May, so we'll just have to wait and see. Saying goodbye This season, Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick will both retire from driving full-time. Following a concussion he had in a crash at Pocono Raceway, 
which prevented him from participating in the second half of the 2022 season, Bush declared his retirement from racing. But Bush says he intends to continue working with 2311 Racing. This season will be Harvick's last one too. To devote more time to his family, he declared that 2023 would be his final full-time season. New Faces This season, five new drivers, Naomi Gregson, Ty Gibbs, Ryan Priest, Ty Dillian, and Eric Amarola, will advance to the Cup Series. Gregson with Legacy MC and Gibbs with Joe Gibbs Racing will be the only two Rookie of the Year contenders in the lineup. Priest will make a full-time comeback to the racing scene for Stuart Hawes Racing in the number 41 vehicle in 2023 after JTG Dougherty switched to a one-car program at the beginning of 2022. At the conclusion of the 2020 season, when Germain Racing made the decision to shut down, Dillian encountered a similar circumstance to Priest. For Spire Motorsports, Dillian will operate the number 77 car. While Al Morola was expected to retire in 2022, he now finds himself on this list of drivers who are returning. But after a successful 2022, Almarola has made the decision to stay for at least one more season. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos.